This particular case, I spent four hours, used six, uh, six different languages to communicate with him. He did not talk back. My sergeant took this picture, said, I got so mad, I gave him a finger. I said, no, I'm not giving him a finger. I tried to communicate with him through sign language. Indeed, at the scene, have a lot of things called sign language. The location, the body of location condition tells me that's a secondary crime scene. The soil material on the blue jean, different than the sand particle on the beach, which tells me the primary scene is an organic rich soil surface. Rigors are already set. Give me estimate time of the death. Livability shift. Tell me the body be moved. Needle mark on the arm. The habitual of this individual, pocket inside out, no wallet, could be the motive, trace evidence, DNA, saliva, hair, everything on the jacket give us a scientific way to profile the suspect. Everything we want to know. It's at the scene, waiting for you. Once in a while you get to the scene, you don't have to do much. This case, I went there, 14 detectives are on the body, said, Dr. Lee, what happened to him? I said, that's elementary, he just got shot. <laughs> Look at the bullet hole. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Where can we find the evidence? I said, call A380010. <laughs> and the case solved. Of course, CSI, every episode, they always work in the dark. And uh, our job, you don't have a choice, could be Dark, could be light time, could be middle of the storm, uh, could be middle of the snowstorm. And uh, of course, we use a lot of light at the scene. Try to do the trajectory, and uh, CSI use light, but their light just a flashlight. Their flashlight is much better, they shine the light, everything pop up. When they have, have two detectives, they have two lights. When I have three detectives, what's happened? Ah, three lights. Okay, you want the light? <laughs> All right. Margaret, you want to give out the light or you want to? Carol, you, you can. Yeah, you have to do the job. Huh? Or light? and badge, okay. Well, we have to give a Russian uh, judge, uh, you want a badge or a light? <laughs> you want both? You want both? Okay, smart, smart, okay. Here, one each, come on. Light, I have to check. Uh, Wow, look at it. Добрый утро. Thank you very much. Капачивай. Хорошо. Хорошо, спасибо, yeah. All right, anyway, three lights. We walk to the crime scene. CSI walk to the crime scene. At the crime scene, we line up for picture. Of course, when you become commissioner, you go to crime scene, seven people lift the tape for you. They all try to kiss your rear end to get the promotion. <laughs> we go to crime scene, we take pictures. CSI take pictures. <laughs> of course, here, they take a picture too. <laughs> Well, whatever you do, don't follow CSI. Goes to crime scene, wear tight pants. Don't wear tight pants. At the crime scene, the tight pants won't work. You see, Carol, you look so good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, CSI, we saw the same thing. Teamwork, one teamwork. I totally agree, teamwork. Their team always one man, one girl, one man, one lady, one lady, one man. Always one gorgeous lady, one handsome guy. Our team, one man work, the rest are watching. (laughs) 
When I go to foreign countries, same thing. One man work, the rest are watching. <laughs> we use a lot of equipment, but CSI equipment is much better than us. Nowadays, we try to friend the scene to the lab, search the database, and uh, instantaneously, real time, give the investigator this fiber is nylon, 2.66 and manufacture in what year, this shoe print is from what company, because the speed is so important. The first 24 hours, that's the most crucial thing to solve the case. Sometimes you wait the laboratory report, six months later, they tell you, oh, this is a shoe print. You say, so what? I already know that's a shoe print, <laughs> right? We want to know what kind of brand name of the shoe print, or where they come from, and uh, any uh, information. Of course, CSI equipment is good. They just put the hair in there, suspect's picture pop up, with name, social security number, and uh, address. And of course, uh, Dr. Lipton going to look at the teeth too, right? Uh, CSI solve a case, they always got a hug and a kiss. I solve a lot of cases, I never got that hug and kiss. Once in a while, an ugly man hugged me. <laughs> but when you go to San Francisco, work on the case, you'll be better careful. <laughs> and they try to kiss you. <laughs> CSI never have any stress. Middle of explosion, they're still working. My advice, middle of explosion, run for your life. <laughs> After explosion over, come back to your master game. Of course, CSI don't have to face what we have. This is Taiwan case, of, uh, the president, vice president, both got shot two million people on hunger strike and chanting, we want Dr. Lee, we want Dr. Lee. You think I don't have any pressure standing there? You think my report, everybody going to like it? Only half going to like it. The other half definitely not going to like it. That's the nature of the beast. Our work, it's not a popularity contest. You have to learn to tell the truth. Nothing but the truth. And of course, especially if you have cases involved in minority. White officer with minority uh, decedent, now, if my funding say so officer is correct, the community definitely hate me. Dr. Lee, we used to respect you. Now we don't. If I say officer was wrong, the law enforcement community going to say, hey, Dr. Lee, you are one of us. You are not supporting us. But uh, so difficult as a forensic scientist, we have to call as it is. Otherwise, you're going to have some Christ, which beyond you can control or apprehend, the whole society can be destroyed. Miami faced that before. Los Angeles faced that many times. New world, looting, burning. In my career, I've been with uh, travel 42 different countries, assist them, law enforcement officer in those countries solving about 8,000 some cases. And uh, doesn't matter from Switzerland to Jerusalem to Russia to China. Victim's family won the same thing. The truth, the fact. What did happen with their loved one? Can we find who is the person responsible for it? I worked with a lot of Russian colleagues on many cases before. We work on war crime. You risk, risk your life because they bury the body with life grenade and lemma. Luckily, I'm still uh, survive. Otherwise, for example, if you dig up the right, wrong thing, that's end of your career. Carol have another speaker here instead of me. <coughs> we also involve in a human right issue investigation, of course, Terrorist incident, that time, I'm still the commissioner. Right away, we sent a rescue team 
uh, myself with 18 our DNA scientists, try to help to investigate. Of course, I like those cases. Those cases, of course, you probably say, who give a shit who killed Kim Tom, <laughs> right? But those cases, as a forensic scientist, we do care because we want to provide a history and answer. But our answer, Kim Tao will not come out of the grave say, you're wrong. <laughs> so uh, anyway, you talk, uh, the last night you talk about Peter Ding. Us next time, ask Peter Ding. We went to look for Pocahontas, our ex experience in England. Rich and famous, that's what you come today want to hear some of those cases. What is a rich famous case? It's rich means the defendant very rich or victim very rich famous because they're sport figure, political figure, could be Kennedy, could be premier of uh, uh, Thailand, could be president of Taiwan, and uh, of course Clinton, and uh, could be Princess Diana. In my career, I involved in a lot of those cases, and uh, of course we also involving serial killer, mass killer, we involved in police shooting, police got killed, all those cases. Recently, we just uh, helped uh, Chicago solve that uh, Chicago Bronze Chicken Massacre. Seven people were murdered in 1993. Uh, we solved the case by one piece of chicken. A piece of chicken overlooked upon in a garbage can, extract the DNA from the suspect. Recently, U.S. said today, list 25 event that changed the world history. When I look at that 25 event, 14 cases, forensic scientists were directly, indirectly involved. One of the cases happened in November 22, 1963. President Kennedy just finished the lunch talk. His limo passed. Texas book deposit. On the sixth floor, a shot was fired, and the Porter film captured that moment. Kennedy got shot. Both his arm raised. Jackie looked at him, doesn't even know her husband got shot that moment. Governor Connolly sitting in the front, made a twist. His wife still looked at the other side. That split moment changed the world history. Of course, Lee Oswald was quickly arrested. Is Lee Oswald the lonely assassin? Or that a political conspiracy? 48 years later, we still don't know. We still debating. Because Lee Oswald was gunned down by Ruby. Recently, the photographer sent this picture to me. He said, Dr. Lee, you did so much, changed the world of criminal investigation, I want you to keep this picture, put in the museum. This picture in our museum now, uh, shows Ruby in close contact, Ganda Lee Oswald. Over the year, scientists debating, is this a single bullet or a double bullet? In 1998, Congress set up another meeting, uh, committee, asking me to look at the issue. We try to use three-dimensional model, trajectory, everything, try to answer this issue. Unfortunately, we don't have an answer. They do have a piece of uh, physical evidence can give us the information. That's the committee exhibit 399, the fatal bullet. This bullet is supposed to hit two people, president and the governor. If we found both DNA on that bullet, that tells me, in fact, that bullet, single bullet, hit two people. If I only found one person's DNA, then maybe have a second bullet. That's pretty straightforward. Logic is fine. Except the DNA found a bullet, found a lot of DNA. But no Kennedys, no Connollys.
Everybody else, DNA. How's that happen? Because early days, when they collect the bullet, they wash and clean it up. So all the biological evidence down the drain. Today, we learn. History taught us a hard lesson. Don't wash the bullet. Collect the evidence first, then wash the bullet. But this is a little bit too late. Of course, they think uh, July 20, 1993, that case, my funding changed the world, changed US history. That case, Vincent Foster, President Clinton's most trustable person, died in a single shot in the mouth in Mercy Park. Year and a half this investigation controversial. Finally, Judge Starr was appointed as the independent counsel. He contacted me to be the chief forensic consultant for this case. And uh, I did the investigation, went back to the trajectory, and uh, spent seven weekends in Mercy Park. Of course, you can see the gun in the hand. A lot of professors say, aha, that's a conspiracy. People kill people, use trigger finger, index, his thumb in there. Except we investigate, forensic investigator or law enforcement, we know, you kill people, you use index finger, you kill yourself, you use thumb, holding a gun. Otherwise, very difficult to fire the shot. Also, gunshot residue, blood spatter on his hand, we know consistent with he discharged his farm. The only thing we cannot figure out is the eyeglass. It's not on him. It's next to his body. You fire a shot. Is the eyeglass going to pop up or stay on? Come on. You guys tried that before? <laughs> they said, why don't you try the experiment? National Science Foundation always say, do experiment. I said, sure, that's my last experiment. I put the guy in my mouth, pulled a pair of glass. I don't even have time to write on the answer. Boom, it's over. <laughs> so, they say, that's the conspiracy. He probably have an affair with Hillary. When you make love, do you take the glass off or leave the glass on? Huh? Both? How do you know you're making love? Any, any wear glass one want to volunteer? Bear? Huh? Oh, it depends the partner. Okay, give him a, you want a light or you want? Okay, give, a, give something to him. You want a badge? All right, anyway. But indirectly, we can prove. Margaret, some people sit in the back. You have to give some stuff uh, people sit in the back. Uh, the gunshot, you have gunpowder residue. You, you shot the blood, you have a blood spatter. Can you see that? So if the eyeglass on him, we should have a blood spatter on the eyeglass. 